everybody. Welcome to the Best of 2022 Clip Show. I'm so excited for this. I'm sorry it's taken a little bit to get this out, but uh, nonetheless, on the 9th of January, 2023, this is the best of the year that was, 2022. So this is how it'll work. I have a list of episodes here um, that I chose, you know, clips from. Um, And then, so what will happen is I'll introduce the first one, which was January 5th, 2022, with my guy Freestyle. Um, And then after that clip, there'll be a break, and then I'll just introduce, do little introductions for the rest of them as well. Okay, so uh, buckle up, get a drink, get whatever. Um, These are some classic sound bites. Funny, serious, you know, things that I personally, you know, I enjoy every guest, but these, um, the definition of best of here on the Sensibly Cynical podcast. Um, don't mind that noise if you hear it. That's my uh, kitten, Jenna, who just uh, turned four months. So, uh, yeah, she's uh, playing with something, and I'm about to play with you. The best of Sensibly Cynical 2022. Enjoy, everybody. Here it is, my clip with Freestyle. This was, once again, January 5th, 2022. The mixing and mastering process. So once we've got all the recordings down and we're crafting it into the final version, I'm very, very nitpicky about that. So, like, some of these songs, like Grinding, for instance, went through anywhere from five to ten mixes where I was like, oh, I want to change something. Mm, yeah. We need to change that. Oh, this little thing is bothering me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like every session was worth it. You know, I, I try to trust my instinct about my edits in terms of mm-hmm. if, I, if something hits my ear, I feel like it's going to hit someone's ear. And <laughs> yeah. I don't let it slide. Yeah, we, like, I'm not one of those people who's going to be like, oh, it's good enough. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't like it. Man. We're going back in. And I feel the same way as like a podcaster, man. Like, Sometimes I'll record something as a podcaster and be like, oh, man, I wish I had a redo. And then when I'm like, I'm live here, it's like there is no redo. Once it's on the Internet, that's it. <laughs> You're right, <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Once it's, yeah once, like, no, oh. you, you experience that as an artist, too. It's like sometimes you'll get like there's only one chance for a first impression. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that that really is a lot like that for performing. You know, like when I did I did my first showcase here in Syracuse and it's like once you once you hit the stage, you hit the stage like you can't. <laughs> Be like, let me do that one more time, guys. I can do it better. Yeah. <laughs> that was my guy, Freestyle. Uh, check him out wherever you get your music. That's Freestyle, P H R E E, Style, S T Y L E, all one word. Now, next on my list is Bunny Stewart. Talk about a classic interview. Uh, model actress out of the Sacramento area. Very well accomplished, independent films, but um, she could do big, big, big films in uh, L.A. if she wanted to. Um, I'm sure that this uh, interview was March 4th, 2022. She talks about, I mean, obviously it's 2022. This is the best of. Um, But anyways, she is amazing, amazing at what she does. She talks about independent films, you know, what she's done. And this was a great interview. So here's a clip from that interview with Bunny Stewart. I mean, like in some sort of film, like either a short film, some sort of film with the director. Well, you remember your first time on oh set? Yes. Um, my first time on set was actually in this uh, this little college movie. And this guy in my class, who I never really talked to, came up. To, he was like, I'm making this uh, film noir. And I was wondering if you could be in it. And I was like, sure, because I always say <laughs> before I know what I'm agreeing to, because life is really exciting that way. You know, this is my movie. I want it to be real. Okay, <laughs> he's the director, right? We right, do, sure. We do, the director is like God on set, you know? Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's the one with the money paying you. Yeah, you know? it's the one. They're the one like whose artistic vision it is that we're we're there to fulfill. And so he said, okay. I said, okay. Oh my God. All right. Well, I'm just going to hit him for real. And, uh, you know, I slapped, I slapped the glasses off of his face. I slapped him. 
I slapped the uh, by mistake. I, I slapped the lens out mm. of his, and he didn't tell me this because I was already kind of like messed up over that. Because I'm like a really peaceful person. The last thing that I mm. I want is hurt anybody. And um, he told me about three months later that I actually knocked a tooth loose out of his head. You don't play in that, did you? You didn't play. Oh yeah, no, no. So. I worked out a lot, so um, so yeah. He told me months later, he's like, "You actually knocked one of my teeth loose," and I was like, "My bad." I'm, yeah, I'm so glad that you didn't tell me that because, like, we had mm-hmm. a party film right after that, and I was so messed up over like hurting him because it's like he was like, "It's okay," but I could tell it was hurting, you know. And it's just like I tried mm-hmm. to make it. I tried to make it like look more. I mean, I mean, look real, but like not so much power, but right. Kind of like, kind of like the fake wrestling type hit. You want to make it look like you're hitting it, but not really. Yeah. And I think that maybe going forward, he might take suggestions of like just faking it. (laughs) (laughs) Let's now fast forward to the month of April. Um, So this is a good one. Um, I did a collaboration podcast with Noob Noob and Z over there at Our Reviews Will Kill You. Technically, this is their episode on YouTube, which you can find um, and subscribe to our reviews will kill you. These guys are hilarious. Um, So we did a Blake Lively collab podcast, her top movies. And, um, you know, of course, it goes off the rails. Um, So you will definitely enjoy this one from the 1st of April. 2022. Yeah, yeah, she's like the hot sorority chick in that fake college. Yeah. I don't even. That's she's not even. It's not even one of her movies that's listed. You sure she's in this? Accept it. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, well, where? Up. it's number she ten. Oh, it's number ten. Ju- Justin Long. Oh, you're right. Accepted. Okay, there you go. Steve Pink. 2006. <laughs> the South Harmon Institute of Technology. It's shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I shit, kind of yeah. remember this being an you know, okay movie. I do wait, not remember see. her being in it. Hold on, Z. You never watched Accepted? I Fucking, um, Lewis Black was the principal. I'm uh, gonna say it didn't make an impression on me. <laughs> Sarah Jean Underwood is it? Is she a Playboy model? I think she, yeah. Jonah she, Hill was in it. Yeah, when yeah. he was super fat. Oh my gosh, is that? Yeah, he was oh there. He was the, he was there like accountant, so they wouldn't get uh, blacklisted. Okay, okay. So you you picked out her number ten movie of all time. Oh, is that is number ten? That's bullshit. We need to. You need to figure out who's making this list and fix it. Apparently, it was based on an algorithm in user searches, but y- uh, you can't see it. I know that, but we can. So, well, I know uh, she was uh, Jeremy Renner's um, sister in the town. Oh, Chris. okay. She was like a she was like a little druggy, but she also. She was like hooking up with Ben Affleck at the same time. She was, but she kept her clothes on during the <laughs> sex scene, so I was not. And she, there was a scene, the classic <clears throat> scene, when she's walking into the when she's walking into the bar, and like she's playing like she's on I don't know what she, she was on something meth, probably. It's always and, meth. Uh, and they try to they try to fuck it, and the cop tries to get her to to uh, basically basically rat on them. She a rat. And she's like. She, no, she ratted on the, she ratted on Ben Affleck and Jeremy Renner. Oh, okay. To the cops, so they would get caught because the town is a bank robber movie. Did she help them pack the car in the garage? Was she Dude, packing the car? Did she so, have a wicked accent? I think hold so. On, before we before we can before we continue, I can't be the only one on this podcast. I think she's hot, right? I've never seen either of them. No, she's seen, hot. No, I no, saw I saw the last movie, but I, I never saw the town. I have no idea. Oh, it's good. It's good. They have the. They have the fake nuns. I think they're nuns. Oh, they dress up as nuns. Yeah, I can see it from the cover of the thing. Yeah, and they have... uh, I'm not even looking this up. I like the town. It's a good movie. And they have um, automatic... What is it? AK-47. I don't know. Whatever, whatever. I'm not a big gun guy. (laughs) They have have something, and they start shooting. Later on in that month, April 23rd to be exact, I was joined by the guys over at Our Culture Podcast. They find hard to get items and they discover, you know, mostly alcohol items, but alcoholic items, but it's good stuff. They're great podcasts. Subscribe, rate, and review our Senate culture, wherever you get your podcasts. Pure comedy, pure gold. Um, this clip is just 
classic. Obviously, that's why it's included here. Um, so enjoy this one from my interview with the guys over at the Arsenic Culture Podcast from April 23rd. 46, you know, the little upgrade. Not the yeah. regular Maker's Mark, the 46 yeah. or whatever. That's they call nice. it. I like that one. I saw a lot of like, are you guys lean towards alcohol or is that just a coincidence on what's happened? That's more just kind of a coincidence because we're we're probably all closet alcoholics. Um, I mean, we enjoy we enjoy alcohol, so it's uh there's not alcohol is the most fun when it comes down to it. But uh we we try to do a bunch of other random stuff. But alcohol is the easiest, honestly. It's like we try to go out and find some random kind of like foods and stuff. We did a fruitcake episode, which I thought was really fun. You did we, a what? We found some fruitcake episode. Oh, okay. we found some fruitcake out of uh some guy in California was charging like a hundred dollars a fruitcake, and uh it was not worth a hundred dollars but we found some kit kats out of japan food is really tough but alcohol it's like you can get booze anywhere you can get some really crazy shit too so as we headed on to may i started this series on the come up um which was a focus on some up-and-coming artists that you know i felt were obviously on the rise that's where the name um and i was like you know what Who would be an awesome first guest for this series? Um, Haley Wilde. She is an amazingly talented singer-songwriter out of California. Great conversation. She does some awesome stuff on, um, you know, TikTok. And her music is outstanding. Um, Vocals, extraordinary. Um, Check out Haley Wilde wherever you get your music. This clip is from our interview, May 1st. I got to say, you are awesome on TikTok. So let me t- correct me if I'm wrong, but you take submissions from from friends or listeners or whoever, and then you pick the best one and do a cover of it. Yeah, I've tried to do more of that. I've been, I've been as like I'm in school right now. So it's been hard to, you know, do the balance of everything. I'm hoping like over the summer, I'll pick that back up. Like I would do polls on my Instagram. And just, I would have like either songs I liked or songs people have told me to cover and I would compare the two and then ask people, you know, which one and then whatever one wins, you know, I would post it. Um, so I'm hoping to pick that back up. But if you have, if you or anybody, you know, or the audience out there has any song recommendations, you can always like comment on my posts on Instagram or TikTok. Um, yeah, I just like to hear what the audience wants and I like to put my own spin. Mm. on the songs it's fun <laughs> well you covered one of my uh favorite songs of all time so i don't know uh if we had like voodoo or whatever but no scrubs <laughs> by tlc oh. is, <laughs> is like one of my favorites ever i i love that song and it's so fun and i like tanking a lot of things and when it's just me and the piano kind of making it more jazz sounding because i just gravitate towards that with my playing and stuff um, so I'm glad you enjoyed that. That was like a fun one to cover. I remember taking so many takes of that, <laughs> just waiting for the right take. Um, mm-hmm. but it was a fun one. Yeah. Uh, who are some other, uh, inspirations like musically? Lady Gaga, um, who I was very inspired by when I was younger, like when she was really sleep- releasing like Just Dance and Poker Face. I think I was like 10 around that time. But like recently, I've kind of like gone back into her discography and I've been listening to, you know, some of her album, Joanne, and then some of her album, Art Pop. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, but Not it's like particularly. very like, it's like kind of more hyper pop, but I love mm-hmm. her, like her witty lyrics in it. And vocally, obviously she's insane. So she's been a big inspiration right now. Honestly, whole Courtney Love. I've been listening to some of that, like Jennifer's Body uh, and the Rolling Stones as well. That's been like a big influence to me right no now. Way. Yeah. No way. That's my yeah. dad. That's, that's my dad. I'm trying to make you <laughs> feel, you know, whatever, some sort of way, but that's my dad's <laughs> favorite band. Yeah. That's no, funny. I, I, go- I, I really like the Stones' um, theatricalness of their music and their performances. Mm-hmm. I kind of gravitate towards and um, the persona. Yeah, those are like kind of my top bands and people I've been I've been listening to right now. You know, as a podcast host, one of the few things that, you know, comes with the territory 
Well, I'm just kidding. It doesn't come with the territory. But if you're lucky, you will find some true, genuine friendships out of this. And um, I would consider Tyson Saner a friend. I've been on his podcast. Um, you know, he does Succotash Shut-In, Anti-Social Show. Um, he's, he's probably the leader, I think, in the uh, Sensibly Cynical guest column. Um, I'd have to go back and research, but I think he's he's at least in the top uh, top two or three. Anyways, on May 15th, I was joined by Tyson Saner on YouTube. We went on YouTube. I'm trying to build YouTube up, so if you could please do me a big favor, a small favor as well, but um, subscribe to Sensibly Cynical on YouTube. Um, great chat we did. I'm um, trying to build the channel, so he was gracious enough to come on and talk rock music. I'm a big rock guy so is he obviously that's why we made the podcast awesome episode check it out this clip is from that interview may 15th enjoy oh yeah i understand because you're married i won't cross that line <laughs> i i appreciate your discretion and not wanting to cross that line or you're not discretion i appreciate your your, <laughs> your boundaries you're thoughtful, I don't know. thoughtful thoughtfulness that's that I'll take that. Yeah, thoughtfulness is good. So enough about me rambling about nothing. Okay. Let's go in go into I, your history with music or try to do the best you uh you can at least. So okay. So yeah, the Beatles were the first like band where I listened to as much as I could, as soon as I could. Um thankfully my dad had Beatles on vinyl. And they really there was something really amazing about it to my to my brain at the time i also liked classical music and i think that i probably heard the influences of classical music in the beatles that's possible i also really like this one single that was popular in the 70s Uh, it's called joy by uh, apollo i'm gonna say 100 apollo 100 Mm -hmm. um have you ever heard that song um that sounds familiar so it's a it's a 70s rock interpretation it's kind of prog rock interpretation of the song jesu joy of man's desiring by what's it one, called? one of the box what's it's the called, song called the song is called joy oh here it is and it is by apollo 100 yeah and it was joy by apollo 100 is a 1971 instrumental yep. pop hit record it's a rendition of a 1723 but wow so it's a remake from 1723 what the hell yeah well this... it's a it's a song that goes um it's an old let's see it's a, oh what's this it hit it's number six. Sang it. it hit number six in 1972 <clears throat> mm-hmm. wow it, it's the one that goes um <laughs> right. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> except it's got this like <laughs> It's got a beat, and you know, it's they put a it's they yeah. put a beat behind it. It they turned into mm-hmm. like a, well, it wasn't disco yet, but it was definitely like a, what did they what was the category that they said it was on there? Um, they had a list of pop like progressive pop. It says okay, cool. So I I so I called the but progressive that's, part. That's, that's hilarious. W- that's Wikipedia. You know the the uh, gatekeeper of all things factual, right? What's that Wikipedia? Oh, certainly. <laughs> I'm a contributor. VHS Mikey. This guy is classic. He owns a bunch of VHS tapes. I mean, stacks and stacks. You can check out the YouTube video. June 11th, he joined me. Um, It was awesome just to go back in history. Man, some of these movies we talked about, i surprised I remembered half of them, to be honest. But this was an awesome chat. This clip is, you know, one of my favorites, um, even of this podcast. Um, but I don't play favorites here on Sensibly Cynical. Irregardless, here's a clip from my chat with VHS Mikey. 2019. Uh, yeah. I, I Like I said, I had another channel, and I, I felt like I was just spinning my wheels there. Uh, I there, The passion just wasn't there. But when I saw some VHSs at a thrift store, I knew what I wanted to do with mm-hmm. the rest of my life. I quit my job. I got rid of my stuff. I got rid of anybody that was holding me down mentally mm-hmm. or upsetting me. And I'm like, I'm doing this VHS thing. Do you remember the first VHS you ever bought? I do. It was the movie Wizards, uh, a, uh, an absolutely crazy movie to watch as a child. I've never seen anything like it. 
Uh, and being that young, uh, the imagery was so impactful. What's the goal? Like, let's say, like, you have a goal, like, five years down the line. I, Are you going to do. do, like, a video? Do you have a video podcast along with the channel, or do is it? I, I want to I stream. I want a podcast. I want other people working with me. I want to have employees. I want it to become a company. But I also want to buy a video store because I'm going to outgrow my house eventually. I can only put so many shelves in here. It's a very small, tiny beach house. Uh, which is really weird to have in Elva, Oklahoma, but I got a beach house and uh, I'm running out of shelf space. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to buy a building and I'm going to make it look just like a video store. It just won't be available for the public. It's mm -hmm. just going to be my, my Mikey museum, basically. Just a week later, my boy Stoner the Villain returned. Sensibly Cynical Bars, part two. Um, so customary i think on the cynical clip show i posted his ending you know the mic drop from the original so it's only right if i post the mic drop on this clip show so here's the mic drop acapella from my bro my boy all the nicknames stoner the villain june 18th all right stoner the villain are you ready to take us take us to uh, the end? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Ladies and gentlemen, hey. Stoner the Villain. Shout out to Wild Boy Wavy. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Sometimes I need to get away. Get away and take a break. Stressing. Sometimes I need to get away. To get away. I cross him over like Kobe hit him with a fade away. The fade away, hey, check it. Yo, I had to manifest it. This FVS shit was a joke till we applied the pressure. I know my granny praying for me, I got God protection. I tell my sister that I love him and I'll slide whenever. I'm trying to make my brother proud and get my mind together. So if I've been distant, don't take it personal, I'm rising levels. I really do this shit. Kobe, yeah, it's off the dribble. Yeah, I got my right to die with me. Really ready to slide with me. Tell a lie for it, never lied to me. Yeah, I always got a right with me. On the side with me, villain with you in it, foe. Addicted to spitting lyrics, I can't let it go. This is where I try angles with the pick and roll. Shoot my shot with a 40 in hand and set it off. While I set it off, sensibly cynical bars. All right, that's it. Adios. Adios. Fast forward now to September 6th. Episode 200, such a huge milestone, so appreciative of all the listeners, even those that have only listened to one episode or a reel on Instagram. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank you. So I had Lolo Melamane interview me, Rewards Reversed. Um, shout out to Orky for doing Choose with Pepper. All right, now here's the clip from episode 200. All right, okay. now we can go to the game. Okay. Go ahead. First first question. Go ahead. I'll answer it. I don't care. Okay. You know, first thing I've always wanted to ask is how did you choose to name your podcast? Um, so it's a long story. So I used to have a co-host. Like if you go into the archives of like episode one all the way through sixty-three, um yeah. I was um, with a, a friend of mine. Well, he, we're no longer like we're no longer friends, but like we were friends, and we were sitting in this car, and we were like, um, we both weren't doing shit, we weren't working or whatever. And um, this was 2017, and like, we he's po he's negative, I'm positive. I try to be the, you know, happy go lucky guy, and I always see you know face value, sometimes to my detriment. So we were thinking of, we wanted to do a positive negative thing. So I'm like, what are some synonyms for positive? Oh, sensible. Oh, okay. Sensibly coming to your senses. And then negatives. I mean, cynical is right, right there. So we were thinking of, we were thinking of, you know, puns. And we're like, when he said sensibly cynical, I'll get to give Frank credit. He, when he said sensibly cynical, I was like, that's it. That okay. is it. So it was kind of throw things at the wall and it stuck. Right. There you go. So <laughs> the humidity kind of sucks. Yeah. But other than that, 
I like it. <laughs> Other than like the worst thing about it, I like it. This is episode 200 of the Sensibly Cynical Podcast. This is an honor. <laughs> Since you love music like I love music. Yes. Hey, let's go. That was my answer. That's good. Let's go. We got to make it fun. Okay. Hey, Dolores, Dolores, on the real though, I appreciate you doing this. I knew you'd be all for it. I knew it. <laughs> I'm crazy. What do you What do you think of how the shirt turned out, though? Oh no, I love the shirts. But wait a minute, since we're doing 200, look. Sensibly cynical. You got it. Hey, it came out. It came out. It came out good. Just a month later, Sienna joined me. She is a singer songwriter out of Las Vegas and also Nashville. Um, awesome, awesome interview. She goes deep into when she first started um what it's like living in las vegas in a tour city and um just a down-to-earth person so uh, i know you'll enjoy this one from october 19th all right joining me now she is a rising singer songwriter out of las vegas nevada sienna what's going on just living in, about to put out this new single called Sass on October yeah. 21st. Make sure you go pre-save, and when it is hey, out, go listen. I like this. Right from the start, hold no punches. I like that. None. Just straight I, up, just straight up, get it out. Get it out. I got a single coming <laughs> out, and y'all are going to love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, might as well just, uh, just start there. Um, so has this been something you've been working on for a while? It has been a few months in the making, uh, which can seem long to some and which can seem short to some others. But, mm -hmm. you know, everything takes time. And I've been very patient in my craft and what I've been working on. And, you know, it all came together and we're doing it. Rocking and rolling. But there's not really it's not really country rock. Right. So what is this like pop country, 2000s country? What kind, what are we talking about here? I would say. Sass is a mix of Shania Twain and Sienna and just having a good time, really. Yeah. Shania Twain, uh, yeah, definitely 90s Shania Twain. You know, yes. I I, I'm, I think I'm a little older than you, so I remember like 90, <laughs> I remember 90s Shania Twain pretty well. Well, you know, uh, I actually grew up <laughs> listening to that. Um, my mom and I would be in the truck and we'd turn on Shania Twain, Martin mm -hmm. McBride, Faith Hill, Trisha Yearwood. Um, and as I got a little older, I started listening to Stevie Nicks and I love Miranda Lambert's new stuff. So I've kind of taken bits and pieces from all those artists to influence myself. Mm. I will say growing up in Las Vegas for, uh, 23 years, mm. I've seen it all, been everywhere, done everything. You know, we've had a lot of fun, but it's just like here in and here in Nashville, you know, mm. the locals don't really go to Broadway like only once in a while. In, in right. Las Vegas, you only really go to the strip or the cool nightclubs if it's mm. a friend's birthday or a special event. You kind of stay away because it's just so busy and the tourists I, you see it from your backyard. Really, I'm, I live very close to the strip back home in Las Vegas, mm. and um, a lot everything's a lot more expensive. Lots of glitz, lots of glam. Well, yeah, what was it like living kind of in a tourist city? That's got to be interesting, locals. It was. People always asked me, did you go to the Strip every day? Did you go out every day? I'm like, heck e no. Every <laughs> once in a while. but every once in a while, you got to go out and have fun with your girlfriends or your family. And Ooh, spooky. Just 10 days later, Ink Panda joined me for the annual Sensibly Cynical Halloween episode. She dressed up as Joker. Such a classic soundbite. You know what? I'm not even going to continue. I'm just going to play the clip. This is from Halloween episode Ink Panda, Panda Cast, October 29th. Oh my God. Joker. <laughs> what is this? Joker? Hold on. Hold on. Gonna go, right? We're just going to go for it. We're just going to go yeah, for it. Yeah. So wait. so wait, how long did that take you to, for those that are uh -huh. listening, like I hold even on. did the tap. I did the tattoos hold too. Hold on, hold on, hold on. For those that are listening to the audio version of this podcast, Ink Panda, the model, is dressed as is that Joker? 
<laughs> yeah. I'll have to, you have to watch the video. This is on IGTV at Sensibly Cynical Pod, and you are Ink Panda 83. This is yeah. priceless. And my mask is from, you want to guess the movie? Purge. <laughs> yeah. I had yeah, a purge, purge mask too. I was going to do Purge, <laughs> but I was like, I'm going to do Joker. That's good. How long did that take? Um, almost two hours with oh the tattoos God. too. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> so, did you have, did you have someone help you? No, I just did it myself. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, it, models, they are, uh, I knew, when you said you had a surprise, I sort of guessed, you know, and I saw the, <laughs> I saw the Instagram poll. Yeah. I want to be, I want to be like one of those podcasts where it's like, oh yeah, got to hit up, got to hit up him. Yep. Got to hit up Sean. Yeah. Oh my, my, my cat just like wait, flung across wait, the that wall. Batman? Was that, was that Batman? <laughs> I know. My cat just like completely You're a joker, like. So <laughs> it would make, um, so what was that? A cat or something? Yeah. Yeah. One of many. So as it falls. So my, one of my friends just recently made me feel better about my cat population because, you know, I'm the crazy cat lady for sure. Oh. Last but definitely not least is my interview with hip hop artist T. Reville. Um, candid, candid interview. You know, this is this, these topics are, you know, mean a lot to me. Uh, interviewing people, giving people platforms, and then we talk about some real stuff, real life. Um, and you know, anytime I get to go to that level, you know, and with, and connect with somebody like that, definitely had to include this. Um, so just two months ago, well, almost two months, November 18th, my interview with T Reville. And I could see, I could see you and Travis Barker. If Travis Barker got involved with you, bro, Shut that up, would be man. that would be sick, man. <laughs> Travis Barker, Derek Wibley from Some Forty One, obviously Tom DeLonge from Blink, bro. Like, yeah. Travis oh, there, yeah, there. Uh, what do you think about what do you think about them returning, man? Bro, listen, me, my boy Jeffy, and my girlfriend already got tickets right for Hershey Stadium. So, like. Uh, I was a lot of people didn't like edging, but like I loved it. I thought edging yeah. was awesome. Um, kind of like a throwback. Yeah, bro. First off, welcome fucking back, Tom. Like, not to say, <laughs> you know, the other singer that was, you know, part of Nine and California, you know, yeah. like those albums really that wasn't blink. They should have changed the, the, the title of the band for those two albums. That's all. Mm -hmm. Um, Tom DeLong is Blink 182, like, and Mark Hoppus, like, I went on tour in 2016. Uh, with Cryptic Wisdom, um, which then we ended up doing a song where we got Hobson on called Strangers. Um, and then uh, I did a few tours myself, uh, headlining tours. And then I was in a very uh, toxic relationship. And um, so I kind of like just didn't really do the touring gig for a while there. And then uh, this year, um, you know, framed with some things and that, uh, that was lies, um, you know, and we'll get to that too. And then, uh, you know, proved my innocence in a sense and uh, got myself out of that and uh, came out with a, an album, which was a punk rock album called Wishing Upon a Dead Star, which has uh, this song called Lying, Wake mm -hmm. a Wish, Favorite Star, very, very real deep music. Um, it charted number five on the iTunes Top 200. Um, uh, that's where it debuted at. And, um, it's a uh, it's it's a blessing, and I'm grateful to be able to uh, still write lyrics from pain, and people you know resonate and listen to it. That's all I could ever ask is you know someone to listen to it, and uh, if it helps someone get by through the tough times, and I did my job here during this lifetime on Earth. Yeah, man, I can um, I have a lot of respect for that, and I'm sorry about you know the struggle, but um, you know it looks like you're spinning it and turning it into a positive, so. You know, I I've similar. I haven't been through you know much of that, but I have been through uh, like medic medical like issues and stuff. And I try to I'll just say it on here. It's my podcast. <laughs> it's Epilepsy Awareness Month, so I have like a history of of like you know it's controlled, but like I, I know it's, it's a different vibe. But like I know what you mean by 
Because if I can just, even me mentioning it, mentioning epilepsy and this getting, you know, 100 views, that's something, you know, and it's not even about the views. It's about spreading, you know, awareness. awareness, not just it's not just like, you know, relationships, but, um, you know, medically and any sort of platform, um, because everyone's human. Like, I feel like nowadays everyone, you know, um, is quick to judge, but, you know, they bleed red like like you do, you know, so uh, that statement. Um I resonate with that. You know, my, my debut, my first ever album was called Labels was because of the same stuff, bro. Not epilepsy. My prayers first and foremost for, uh, you know, having that medical condition. My oldest daughter has uh, epilepsy as well. So, um, oh, wow. It's my, my, my prayers. Thank you for listening to this episode. The best of Sensibly Cynical 2022. Here's to 2023 and beyond. Um, once again, check it out, Sensibly Cynical, wherever you get your podcast. Um, Twitter is at Cynical Sensibly. Instagram is Sensibly Cynical Pod. Check out the Facebook page, WordPress, and YouTube. I am really pushing YouTube. Subscribe to Sensibly Cynical on there. Bonfire, go on there, get the merch. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you for making time to listen to me post clips from the best of the podcast this year please everyone hope everyone is having a great new year so far and as always stay safe and take care